I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I want to talk to you about concealed carry in the workplace. So my background comes from Naval Special Warfare, where I spent the better half of my adult life as an operator, as an instructor. Back in the day, I was uh, immersed into a low-vis mission profile, which had me working with our host countries to perform surveillance operations against different types of organizations and personnel. And back then, we didn't have any concealed carry tactics. We didn't have holster manufacturers that specialized in concealed carry. We didn't have compact firearms that you could carry more discreetly. We didn't have any of that. So when I came back from those various missions, it became very important to me to start figuring that stuff out. So again, I wanna circle back to concealed carry in the workplace. And we're in unprecedented times right now. There are so many people that are obtaining their license to carry or whatever your state's uh, terminology is for that. Uh, I think the country right now is sitting at about 5.5 to 5.6 million license holders. That's insane, that's huge. And a large majority of those folks are people that actually have regular nine to five jobs. They work in an office space. Uh, lawyers, accountants, they have unique challenges in the sense that a workplace, you're not able to wear your favorite range pants or range belt or your favorite blaster that you have totally decked out for you know, all things evil. You can maybe get away with it for a couple of days, maybe even a week, but if you were to think about it, the average American workforce is working 260 to 265 days out of the year, 30 to 60 hours, eventually it's gonna catch up to you. And we talk about two different types of workplaces, right? Permissive, non-permissive. So if you happen to work in a non-permissive and you're trying to do this, that's a real sketchy scenario. You have to think about your career. You have to think about how you put food on the plate for your family. But if you're working in a permissive environment, you still have to be cognizant of the simple fact that we don't want people to know. What I see as a mistake is when people come to a class, when they spend 70% of their time in a workplace that would restrict their ability to carry what they like to shoot on the weekends. So we really have to re-educate people on the ideas of what realistically they can get away with on a long-term plan. Not just the one or two times out of the week that you might want to think about it or even a month, but that long-term career path. So let's dive into that a little bit more. Generally, there's three common modes of carrying in the workplace, and they each have their pros and cons and challenges and rewards and all that other business. So I wanna talk about th those three in specific. And the first one I wanna talk about is the ankle holster. I love the ankle holster because it does a great job of concealing the firearm. It's out of sight, it's out of mind. Typically when I have to wear some type of tuxedo or an outfit that doesn't have very good belt loops, I'm a big fan of the ankle holster. Typically I wear the ankle holster on my weak side leg so that puts the firearm on the inside of my legs which helps to break up the silhouette even more. And typically when I wear an ankle holster I carry a subcompact so a Glock 26 is ideal for me. It gives me a 10 round magazine, it's plenty sturdy, plenty accurate, plenty reliable so I'm a big fan of that particular platform. The next one that we see is a pocket holster. And on a pocket holster there's two positions that you can carry it. You can carry it either in the front pocket, you can carry it in the back pocket. Front pocket is really hard to get to when you're sitting down. And since you're in an office space, you have to assume that you're gonna be sitting down a lot. So the back pocket makes it much more viable. Typically when I'm carrying in the back pocket holster, I like to carry a five shot J-frame. It's nice and light. It has a great uh, kind of fixture when it's in my back pocket. It's easy to get to. A gun is better than no gun. So while it only has five shots, that's five shots that I might not have had before. The last one is the tuckable option. And on the tuckable option, there's a couple things. I don't recommend carrying it tuckable on the strong side hip because what ends up happening is the back part of your shirt tail typically gets a lot of what I call feathering, which is where it slightly gets pulled out a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And because it's behind you, it's kind of hard to see that. So that gives it away sometimes. So what we're mainly talking about with the tuckable option is on the front side of the body. So that's either appendix or cross draw. And the other nice thing about the um, tuckable option is that it allows me to carry maybe a slightly larger frame, like a compact, like a Glock 19. If I'm gonna be tucking, I will typically carry a Glock 43. It's a great balance of a small, thin firearm that I can get away with very easily. So let's talk about cons. Con for an ankle holster, if you're not used to wearing something around your ankle, it's awkward. And the problem is, is that you're carrying weight on one ankle and not the other, so it can be a little weird in your gait. If you're having a hard time getting used to the comfort level, or if you just kind of walk funny, that may not be your best bet. Uh, a pocket holster, some people find it in the back pocket to be not as comfortable. But really, one of the ways to make it comfortable is choosing a smaller frame, which can be a con, because now you're looking at smaller capacity, smaller calibers, difficult reloads, difficult uh, marksmanship scenarios, so that's a con for it as well. And on the tuckable side, it's that small little print of the clip that you can still see from, from the layman that can pick up on that, and then of course, you know, you become that guy carrying the gun in the office. So those are the limited cons that you see in each one of those categories. All right, so let's summarize real quick. 
the first thing I need you to do is define the mission. Why, what are you trying to do? I want to find a firearm that I can conceal, right? All right, well, okay, you could conceal it probably walking around town, but can you take that same platform and bring it into your workplace? That's what we talk about being authentic. Make sure that you are choosing the best firearm for that mission. So be specific in how you define that mission. I want to be able to carry a firearm at work. So let's think about what I can best do there. Um, once you have figured out the firearm, the next puzzle that you have to solve is the holster. And there's a lot of holster options out there. And unfortunately, you're gonna have to play with them until you find that right one. But some of the things that you wanna consider is, you know, first and foremost, that it does secure the firearm, it does protect the trigger, and that it does actually secure to your body. And if it meets those criteria, then your chances are you're gonna probably find a lot of holsters to choose from. Um, the last thing that I would encourage you to do is to practice on your own, but also obtain formalized instruction from folks that are experts in the subject. And there's not as many as you might think, but there's, there's still enough. So there's no real excuse why you couldn't go out and get formalized instruction, take that formalized instruction and practice. The LTC classes or the license to carry classes that are out there, they're great, but they really only teach you about the law. They don't really teach you how to carry concealed. They don't teach you how when you move from an environment that is, you know, mild tropical environment to a cold wintry environment. They don't teach you how to transition between those. They don't teach you how to select a firearm that would be ideally suited for concealed carry. They don't teach you the ins and outs of everyday carry where you are literally carrying every day and how important selection of gear becomes at that moment. So unfortunately, there's only so much they can get accomplished in those classes and it puts a lot of responsibility on you as the practitioner to really go out there and educate yourself on that. Yes, you can watch videos. Yes, you can buy books, but there's really no substitute from getting formalized instruction from somebody that is a credible expert in the field. So I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts. Thanks for tuning in.